Hello and welcome to today's webinar. Today I'm going to be showing you how to apply retention policies using the 365 Compliance Centre to your Microsoft 365 environment. So I've logged into the Compliance Centre via the URL and then down here on the left hand side I'm looking for the Information Governance Toolset. Within the Information Governance Toolset, I'm going to be focusing on the retention policies and I'm going to be creating policies in here to retain the content that we want to keep and I'm going to be doing that for SharePoint Online, 365 Groups and Microsoft Teams. Now I'm specifically showing um, the difference between Microsoft Teams and, uh, and something like SharePoint Online because you are required to have a separate policy for Microsoft Teams and when we go into create the new policy I'll show you why that is the case. So I'm going to click on new retention policy and here you'll see that I need to give the policy a name and I can fill in a description. So where we see the red asterisk, it is a mandatory field and in the description that's not mandatory. However, we do recommend that you enter a description that explains what the policy is doing. If I see a little blue eye within the environment, I can click on that and that tells me some information about the field. So in this case, it's asking me to enter a name that's easy to remember and describes the policy's purpose. So in this case, I'm going to call this one SharePoint Online Retention Policy. And because I'm going to be applying that retention for seven years, I'm going to put that in the title. In terms of the description, I'm going to put in what the policy is actually doing. So SharePoint Online Retention, content to be retained for seven years. And click Next. Here you'll see that the little blue eye has automatically flagged to let me know that this is going to apply to all content. So I can choose the locations where the, con where the policy will be applied. And I can also use some advanced settings to apply content to specific information um, through the advanced settings. So just clicking off there. So the options that I have here are to retain the content. So that is what I want to do. So we're specifically looking to retain content in the Microsoft 365 environment so that um, we can prevent permanent deletion or loss of information um, within that environment. So to do that, I'm going to say, yes, I want to retain the content and then I have options for how I'm going to configure that retention. So the first box here, if I drop that down, I can retain the content forever. And if I select that, you'll see that the settings disappear. In this case, I wanna specify the time. So I'm going to say for this long, it's already set to seven years, it's defaulted to there. And I can also change that period if I need to. In this case, it's seven years that we require. So we're going to leave that selected. And then I can retain the content based on two criteria, from either from when it was created or from when it was last modified. In this case, I'm going to go from when it was last modified. The next setting I have is whether I want to delete the content after this time. So if we just click on the little information icon there, if we do choose yes, the content will be deleted from where it currently lives, so within place within SharePoint Online, and also from the secure location where copies are kept. So the secure location pertains to the preservation hold library for SharePoint Online. Um, so when a policy is in place and content is edited or deleted, it will automatically place a copy in the preservation hold library. So 
This is just saying that if we choose yes to delete the content after the retention period time, it's going to delete it from the SharePoint library that it's currently within, so the location where it is, and also from the preservation hold library. If we choose no, the content is left in place and we'll need to manually delete it if we want it to be removed. So in this case, I'm going to choose no. The other option I have is to just delete the content. So what that means is that nothing will be retained. So there'll be no copies of the content anywhere and users will be free to permanently delete their email, documents, content, etc. If I select no, you'll see that the option to retain the content disappears along with the settings. So that's just letting me know that the retention is no longer going to be applied and I'm now deleting content as soon as it reaches this certain age. So it's going to be deleted one year from when it was last modified. We don't want that, so we're going to keep the yes button on. If I wanted to use advanced settings, I would click here and highlight that. And then I have the option to detect content that contains specific words or phrases or detect content that contains sensitive information. We're not going to be doing those two today. We're going to stick with our seven year retention policy and we're going to keep our content after this time and click next. So here I have the locations that I can then apply my policy to. So you'll see in the top section here, I can apply the policy to content in all of my Office 365 locations apart from Microsoft Teams. So you'll see that I can apply it to Exchange, the public folders, Office 365 Groups, OneDrive and SharePoint all at the same time. So all content in all of those locations will be retained for seven years, or I can choose the specific locations. We're wanting to retain content in SharePoint and Office 365. So in this case, I'm going to switch off the other locations available to me. So I'm now narrowing my policy down to retain content for seven years in SharePoint and Office 365. If I want to specifically retain content within a certain site, I can do that by selecting Choose Sites, clicking on Choose Sites and entering a site URL. So it is good practice to have the site open or copy the URL before creating the policy. I've got a SharePoint site open here, so I'm just going to copy that URL and paste that into this location. Click on the plus button and then select that site and click choose. I've now added that specific site to that location to be managed. So that's narrowing down or refining the sites in which the retention policy is going to be applied. So it is going to apply to SharePoint Online, but only to that particular SharePoint Online site. I can also exclude sites. So if there are particular sites within your SharePoint Online configuration that you don't want to retain content, you can apply it to the entire SharePoint environment and then go through the same process as selecting a site to exclude a site. In terms of the Office 365 groups, I'm going to apply it to all Office 365 groups. So you can see here that this policy is going to be applied to all groups and I'm not going to exclude any groups. And then click Next. And this then gives me the option to review my settings so I can check to make sure that the configuration is correct. The policy name is SharePoint Online Retention Policy. It's retaining content for seven years. 
So coming down to the settings here, I can see that the retention period is to keep the content for seven years. In that case, I'm going to click create this policy. This policy is now active in the environment. It will take up to a day to apply to the SharePoint Online content that I've selected and up to a day to apply to the Office 365 groups. So I'm now going to go ahead and create another policy. This time I'm creating one for Microsoft Teams, chat and conversation. And I'm going to retain that for 15 years. And click next. Again, I'm getting a pop up around the content that it's going to apply to all content. I can use the toggles to change the number or I can backspace and type in the number of years that I want to retain the content. And this time I'm going to go from when it was last modified. So conversations and chats are um, being interacted with on a frequent basis. So we're going to go from the last modification to then retain those conversations and chats for 15 years. Again, I'm not going to delete that content after this period of time. I'm going to just retain it in the location to be managed either manually or through some alternate processes, which you can also use the 365 Compliance Centre to manage that. I'm going to click Next. Now, I'm just going to show you what happens and the reason why you must have a policy that is specific for Microsoft Teams and chat conversations. As soon as I turn on the channel messages locations, so either the channel messages or the Teams chats, what happens is automatically all other locations are switched to the off position. So it's not currently possible to create a policy that goes across the other 365 locations as well as Microsoft Teams. So this is why we must have a second policy in place in order to retain content within Teams channels, messages and chats. So I'm going to turn them both on. In this case, I am going to choose a specific team for the channel messages. So if I click on Choose Teams and click on Choose Teams again, I'm presented with the teams within my environment. In this demo environment, I just have one. You may have multiple teams in your uh, own organisational location, so you can pick and choose the teams that you wish to apply this content to. So I'm going to select my team, click on choose, and then click done. And you'll see that I'm applying this policy to only one team for channel messages and for team chats I'm applying it to all teams. Going to click next and again it's potentially going to take up a to a day to apply that retention policy. Just checking my settings, Microsoft Teams and chat and conversation, 15 year retention. I can see that it's applying to the correct locations, Teams channel messages and Teams chats. And then in terms of the settings, I'm retaining my content for 15 years. So I'm going to create this policy. So you can now see when we return to the home screen for retention, I have two policies in place, one for Microsoft Teams chat and conversations, which is retaining content for 15 years, and one for SharePoint Online retaining content for seven years. And I want to point out here that why naming your policy in a way that it describes what the policy is doing is important because as you can see um, looking at these policies I can easily identify what the policy is doing without having to open it. So now that these policies are in place they're going to ensure that content in both of these locations will be retained for the period specified in the policy. 
in the location um, where it actually resides, so in place within SharePoint Online and within the Microsoft Teams workspaces. If a user deletes or modifies the content, it will be retained in the relevant secure folder for the pre period of retention. So I hope that you've found this webinar useful and if you would like to know more about retention in Microsoft 365 or the Microsoft Compliance Centre, you can contact McTish via our website. Thanks for joining me.